Good morning everybody, it's Miss Shopler here. Hopefully by now you've had a chance to play around on snail races, making some predictions um, and seeing whether you're right or not, seeing which snail wins. If you've not done that, please have a go at least one or two games before you watch this video explaining exactly what's going on and why we can make better predictions. So, um, game one that I played earlier, um, I predicted that snail number seven was going to win. So I played the game and lo and behold, snail number seven wins. Now, if we look at this diagram, we can see number one didn't even get off the blocks. Um, number six did quite well, eight and nine did okay, but seven was well ahead. So I'm gonna play another game and I'm gonna be quite confident about the fact that I think snail number seven is gonna win again. So in game two, um, I predict snail number seven is gonna win. When I played the game, snail number eight won. Um, so snail number seven did pretty well still, but snail number eight won this particular game. So I might decide, based on the fact that snail number eight won that time, snail number seven won the time before, probably seven or eight are going to win, or I might decide something completely different. Um, so I'm going to stick with snail number um, seven, so I'm going to predict that snail number seven is going to win this next game. And lo and behold, snail number seven wins. I mean, you could say, ha ha ha, Miss Shopler knows what her slides are going to look like. I could have predicted snail number two and snail number seven would win. Um, so what we can do is have a look at the results and we might refine what we're going to predict next. But there is also another way that links to probability. So... Um, we can predict the outcome by thinking logically. Probability is all about listing outcomes. And if you spent some time on the um, last lesson working on listing outcomes, this snail races um, outcome um, will allow you to take this a bit further. So we can work out all the possible outcomes um, of the race by rolling two dice, and we can list this in what's called a sample space diagram. So this is just basically a table, um, and it will have a list of everything that could happen, and this will allow us to put some numbers and probabilities to those outcomes. So you can see here in my heading, I've got dice number one up here, um, and I've got dice number two on the side in blue. Um, both dice had a possible of six numbers, one to six on them. So if I filled in my table, my top row, possible numbers, I could get a one, two, three, four, five, or six, and the same on dice two. Um, so to work out what the possible scores are going to be, I'm going to add the scores on the dice together, just like we did um, in the snail race game. And whenever we got that score, it would move that snail forward one um, point. So if we add one and one together, we get two. Um, if we add one and two together, we get three. If we add one and three together, we get four five, six, seven. Okay, so we're just adding together these numbers in blue and red and we're writing our answer um, where those two intersect. So if we add two and one, we get three. If we add two and two, we get four and so on. And we can start filling out our table until we have all the possible scores here. Um, so we can then ask questions like which score is going to be most likely in the table? So we can pause the video maybe um, and have a think, have a look at the table. Which number, which score appears the most in this table? OK, so hopefully you've paused the video and you've had a think. And what you will have found, if you've done this correctly, is that number seven is the most likely score. Now, number seven appears six times in this table. There are 36 possible scores you can get, um, and in total, you get six sevens. So we can say the probability of scoring a seven, which is also the highest, is six ways out of a total of 36, which can simplify down to a six. And similarly, we can ask the question about which score is least likely. So just pause the video and see if you can work out which score or scores are least likely. OK, so hopefully you pause the video and you've worked out that this number and this number are the least likely scores. There are two least likely scores. They occur only once. So that's two and that's 12. Um, so 
probability of scoring two is one possibility out of 36 in total in our table, and the possibility of scoring 12 is one out of 36 in our table as well. So if we add those two scores together, we get two out of 36, um, scoring two and 12, and the probability of getting our least likely score is going to be 1 18th, but obviously 2 on its own would be 1 36th, and 12 on its own would be 1 36th. Last thing I'm going to ask is which score is impossible? So just pause the video and see if you can work out which score is impossible. OK, so looking down our list, um, of snail races on the right, we can see there are snails numbered 1 to 12. So number 1 is the only score that's impossible. Um, the lowest score we can possibly get is 2, because we're always rolling two dice, so the lowest scores we can get on both of them are 1, which add together to make 2. We would say the probability of scoring a 1 is 0, so that is our impossibility value. OK, so knowing this, um, and knowing how to create sample space diagrams, we can predict more accurately what's going to happen. So we might know that snails 7 is going to win one sixth of the time, which is significantly more than snail number 1 and snail number 12. Um, but bear in mind, this doesn't guarantee success. So if you're playing games like this, um, we can use probability to make more accurate predictions, but it doesn't guarantee that that outcome will happen.